Orbis kind of creates what I call jigsaw puzzle of opportunities. That is, it creates a plan where each parcel is like a piece in a jigsaw puzzle, and if you want to do something on that parcel, you know that it's going to fit in with all the other pieces of the jigsaw puzzle. So you have some certainty. You know, for instance, if you're going to spend money redeveloping a site, you know that there's, you know, that, for instance, there's not a gas station going in next door or a noxious use. Um, it creates certainty because of that. The flexibility opens the market, but the form is ensured by the code. So you, you know what the place is going to look like. And the fine grain enables changes at small scale. So it allows local people to participate in their community change. And enabling small scale in these days especially enables easier financing. In addition, we found through these communities that reuse for neighborhoods is very important because it allows startups to come in at low rent and join the community and help change it with their vitality. And if you're building new, new buildings uh, typically are, require much higher sales and therefore much higher rents. And they're often not feasible when a new neighborhood is trying to bootstrap itself. The plan can also create what I call a toolbox for citizen action. And finally, because the code is so clear and relatively simple to understand compared to a standard zoning code, the neighbors get to own their own community. They can, they can hold that code in, in one hand, and when something's going to happen, they can open it up, and then they can go to the city and say, I'm sorry, but this isn't what we agreed to. And it gives the neighbors and the neighborhoods control over their own destiny. So when you're coding for Main Street, one of the big issues here we've heard is that of these four neighborhoods would all like to have uh, their, neighbor, their, their Main Streets improved. Um, it's important to understand the history of Main Streets here because most of these neighborhoods, I think all of them, are pre-car. They're not only pre-car, they're pre-streetcar. The original transport was by foot or on horse. Well, when you have that situation, the shops were all likely to be small because um, a five-minute horse ride is very different from a five-minute car drive. And so you have lots of little shops that were supported in small areas. Um, their size allowed more shops and walking and horse use meant more scattered locations. We had to have many, many more locations where retail happened. Okay, then the streetcar came along, and the street with the streetcar you were able to consolidate business districts because now all of a sudden you had massive people coming to one place for their transport. And that meant you had an attractive market for those businesses, and that's how a lot of your business districts developed. But then the car came along. And the streetcars were removed. Um, after the car, retail that wasn't aggregated together basically failed. Um, small shops had higher distribution costs than bigger shops that had fewer locations. So they failed over time. The neighborhood walkability was lost over time because of the need to do more and more traffic improvements for cars. And the streetcar district that had been so vital lost their original driver, which was the presence of transit that attracted a lot of people. And the result of that is that in every one of these districts today, the leakage is massive, and most of the businesses that people would use on a daily basis are gone. So how do you then, in the post <coughs> post-car era fix any of that? Well, one way is to add density directly adjacent to the businesses. So that because the closer someone is to a business, the higher the capture ratio. Um, 
You also need to cluster businesses together, if they're small businesses, to increase their utility so that when somebody comes, they can make one stop. I know that there are shoes, there's women's clothing, there's a bakery, and a whole cluster of businesses that support each other. You need to maintain the building street front presence so that it's comfortable to walk. Um, you need on-street parking so that people who do come by car feel like the area is going to be convenient for them. And each on-street parking space confers a high value in sales to the business. You need a walkable street for them. You need two-way streets. And for anybody who doesn't believe this, I ask you to go, um, now I'm blanking on the names, the, the two streets that run through um, yeah. 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 <laughs> you get a completely different view of the street if, you, if you're used to the one way going down the other way. You see more. And the thing about main streets is that they tend to be typically three to four blocks long of uninterrupted retail or service. 